It is at that point that God speaks and we listen. Consider the man who saved a small fortune from hard work and wise investments but suffered a great loss. One day while scanning the pages of an investment journal, he saw an opportunity that appeared to be too good to be true. It was a chance to buy 1,000 acres of prime timber at an unbelievably low price. When he considered how much timber sold for brothers and sisters, he said immediately, I must go to the bank and make a personal investment from out of my savings and I'm willing to mortgage my home and secure other loans that I might be able to ascertain that land. Yeah. However, before he could claim his new acreage, a tornado swept through the area and completely destroyed his 1,000 acres of prime timber. When he surveyed the area, he saw thousands of trees, most too small to be sold, scattered over the landscape. He had been financially ruined. For somebody who might be in bankruptcy tonight, this is not the end of your story. Yes. God can restore you and give you another opportunity. Yes. This man had lost everything he had. His big dream had failed. I want to interject a thought tonight. You are to be a big dreamer. If you are not a big dreamer, you will never reach your ultimate goals. In order to get anywhere in life, you got to have big dreams. Don't let anybody tell you not to dream big. Everybody who is believing God to do a great thing in their lives, I want you to say it after me. I'm a big dreamer. I'm a big dreamer. And you're going to find when you tell your dreams to some people, they may not often understand it because negativity is going to come out of them. And the first thing they're going to say is that you can't do it. Somebody here might want to be a model. You might want to be an actor. You may be more, may wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. And you hang with folk who tell you you can't do it. But I want to tell you, stop hanging with limited-minded people. You gotta learn how to hang with some folk like yourself. We we're trying to talk about I almost let go, but God kept me. Well, two years later, a friend stumbled upon the man after a conference and expressed sympathy over his loss. But to the friend's surprise, the man who had obviously suffered a great defeat was beaming with enthusiasm. The man told him of his dismay at the sight of his destroyed investment. I sat down at breakfast for the morning that I had lost everything and I had a talk with God. And for the first time in a long time, God actually spoke back to me. The man said after he lost everything, he sat down and had a nice talk with God. And God answered the man in a most peculiar way. When I asked for an answer, the waitress handed me my breakfast. And when she handed me my breakfast, she had toothpicks on my breakfast plate. That was my answer. With a burst of enthusiasm, the man said, I arranged to have all of my fallen trees made into toothpicks. I wish I had some help today. And now today I have toothpick factories in 10 cities, cities excuse me, and my investment has tripled. God showed me how to turn my fallen trees into toothpicks. 
I'm trying to get somebody tonight. Somebody may have fallen or almost given up and let go because your dream didn't happen. But I want to tell you, you are on the verge of success. You cannot experience failure without also experiencing success. There are many today, brothers and sisters, who mourn over a failure and consider themselves failures. Failure is a part of the refining process of every life. And occasional failure has tendencies to humble us and remind us that we are dependent on a higher power than ourselves for every blessing we receive in life. Are you all going to talk to me tonight? There are many people who never truly know God until they hit the bottom. It is then and only then that God can show them how to take the destruction that has wrecked their spiritual lives and turn it into an opportunity for victory. Oh yes, somebody shouted, I almost let go, but God kept me. As Christians, we know that every experience in our lives has our best interest at its intent. Even when we stumble, the stumble is allowed so that it can make us more careful and prevent a fall. When we seem to hit the bottom in life, we do not give up. We look up to God and find ourselves in his arms as he shows us how to turn adversity into failure. I wish I had at least two people in this house tonight that can testify God can turn adversity into success. Yeah. Well, tonight this text focuses on David as he communes with God at a time when he appeared to have hit rock bottom. The life of David is a typical of the average believer. There were times when his faith was strong and championed the cause of God. In such moments, he was a person who would be an, a prime example of faith and courage. There were times in the life of David that he would exemplify faith and courage. These moments are marked by his faith as his shepherd's heart for the flock and to protect it against lions, 